I was also curious, having gone through everything that you've gone through with music, is there anything that you would change about the industry if you could? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, uh, how old you are? How old am I? I'm 50, how old are you? I'm 54. Uh, yes. 54, I got a couple years on you, I'm 59. When I grew up and I went to the record store and I bought Left Overture, sure, Wayward Son probably got me to buy the album. But when I brought that album home, I listened to that whole album, you know, would keep on flipping it and listen to the entire side. And you really got a full feel for what that band was about, even though the music might be very dynamic. And it was like that uh, for me with all bands, you know, Chicago and Rush, look at 2112, you know. you it's one of, That's one of my five Desert Island albums. Uh, uh, absolutely. And it's just, you got into that whole album, you got to feel the flavor of that band. And establishing that from an album and not one song. And that's the unfortunate thing about today is you go to iTunes, you hear a song you like, you go to iTunes and you buy that song. You're not getting a full spectrum of what that band is about and the other aspects of that band. I, I think that's an element that's really missing today. It, it makes me wonder if a full theme album like 2112, um, like, you know, um, you know, some of the stuff the Who did, you know, whether or not that type of thing, because we have such shorter attention spans now. And because like you said, it's, it's a, it's right. a, I want the one song I want dynamic, whether or not that type of thing could still be done today or whether or not in some way, that would almost be in some bizarre way, be revolutionary, even though it was done in the seventies over and over and over again. In other words, would it be revolutionary today for somebody right. to put out an operatic, essentially full blown album piece? Uh, the question is, do people have that attention span yep. now? Uh, are you able to you know, sit and relax and not have something visual? Uh, yeah, not be like, I got to have this. Right. I, I mean, God, I remember being a kid and getting Quadrophenia, you know, and listening to that album uh, and just, you know, it, that's another element that's missing is letting your imagination paint the pictures instead of looking at your computer screen or your TV screen. Uh it's it's really un, unfortunate now 112 where you know the whole one side was you know different segments of a particular theme i think the kansas fans would enjoy that um now you guys just released your uh, live album point of no return yes. live and beyond why was it important for you yes. guys to make that record and release it when you did? Uh, you know, uh, with the pandemic that went on, uh, it did stop us at all uh, from putting stuff out. I mean, Absence of Presence came out right in the middle of the pandemic. You know, and I know Phil said <laughs> that he, he talked to some and... Uh, why are you putting that out now? You can't, you know, you can't tour. You don't know when we're going to go back out and tour. How are you going to promote it? And it's like, oh, we wanted to give something to our fans, you know, in the middle of a, a hard time uh, of not knowing, you know, gosh, when are things going to go back to the way they were, if they will. So it was important to, for us to put something out at that time. Uh, point of no return live and beyond. Same thing. You know, just want to give our fans something. Uh, and uh, we, we're just uh, over our heads at how good that came out. You know, it really has that love 
live, that live feel, you know, you have that, the ambient sound of the room and that live element. And uh, it, it, it's something we're just really proud of. Both. Well, and, and that's important because we talked earlier about how much when people do see you live, they, they don't expect it to be, like you said, as, as incredible as it really is. And, and if I'm not mistaken, your front house, uh, front of house engineer is the same engineer who worked on an album. Why was that important for, for you guys? Oh, Chad Singer. Well, let me tell you, that, that guy's worth his weight in plutonium. Uh, <laughs> uh, because he's the guy that is seeing us every night and he's seen us at, you know, there are times we're human. There there's times when we might be off a night, but boy, there's, there are just nights when things are clicking, when it's, when everyone's in sync and everyone is feeling good that night and on fire. Well, Chad's the one that is witnessing that and hearing that. So he is the best guy to engineer that live album and produce that live album because he witnessed those particular songs at their best. And that's what we put on that album. So, so your tour is in full swing and the, the live Kansas experience is, is coming back to hundreds of thousands of folks across the U.S. Uh, leg of this tour. What can our local audiences expect to see when you come to Pensacola, Florida, which is right here in our viewing area on January 7th? Well, outside of Chicago, where, uh, you know, we're right around the corner from 20 below zero weather. So Pensacola sounds really nice to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you're just going to witness a band that loves what they do, still loves what they do. Can't wait to hit the stage and just going to bring the best show possible to you. And if I can ask everyone uh, in your viewing audience to please go to kansasband.com, visit the news, see what we're doing, but please visit our schedule. We're playing everywhere around the country. We're slammed with our schedule. Please come out and see a Kansas show. You won't be disappointed. It's really a great show to see. Ronnie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you guys on January 7th at the Sanger Theater in Pensacola, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Platt.